All right, hello class. Um, in, in this video, I'm going to work on the brick or the stone detailing of this project. Now, again, we're only using Photoshop tools for this assignment as a way to practice. There are definitely better or other ways of making stones and bricks uh, from using photographs to 3D modeling it to even an illustrator, all of which I'll, I have videos on. But this is a practice assignment. We're just learning Photoshop tools. So I'm going to throw something together that will be good enough to allow us to keep practicing the same sort of skills. It might not be the quickest way or even the best way you can do it in Photoshop if you spent a very long time or even applied some of the techniques I've done in the more advanced tools to Photoshop directly. You could probably get there. But again, that's OK for this beginning assignment. And I'm going to do it sort of like I did the siding by making a pattern and then playing with the perspective. So I'm going to start by making a new layer, which I've already done. I'm going to call it brick and selecting the color I'm going to use. I'm going to start with the mid-tone gray because I like to use sort of grayish, blackish bricks. Um, maybe make it a little darker than that. We'll say OK. And I'm just going to select everything on my screen and I'm going to fill the entire screen that gray color. So edit fill. I'm going to go to foreground color like this. Just paint it all gray for now. And uh, can control D to deselect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter. I think I haven't, haven't tried this. I'm sort of swinging it here just for this one piece. Go to filter gallery and I'm going to go to texture, I, th I think, and I'll go to crackle. And we can see it sort of makes a stone like pattern and we can we can play with the sizing and, and whatnot uh, through these toggles. And I think I'm going to want to make them bigger. Something like this. We'll say OK, that apply this across the entire field here. OK, 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 there we go. Probably could have made it bigger. We can see they're pretty small here. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, control T for scale and sort of make this all bigger as needed to, to the shape, those, that texture sort of gets large enough. Now I'm going to have to make it a lot bigger. So if you haven't set yours yet, you should set your spacing a lot larger than I did on mine. I want to keep zooming in so you can see that 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 probably feels about right. Now, the reason why I did it across the whole screen is because um, I sort of need to get these horizontal and verti vertical lines. Really, vertical is going to be vertical, but the horizontal lines a bit in perspective. So what I'm going to do is make a pattern. Temporarily, I'm going to turn off my building layer. I'm going to select this entire area and go edit, uh, define pattern, and I'm going to say OK. And then I'm just going to delete. Oops, I deleted uh, too much there and turn back on my building. And actually, what I'm going to do is I, I don't really need to delete anything, do I? I can I can keep using this. I'm still going to need that pattern. So I'm going to do each step, actually, because um, each each piece is in sort of a different perspective. So I'm going to go edit. Uh, transform perspective and I'm going to go sort of make sure my midpoints on my horizon line. If I need to go to scale, which I do in this case, transform scale, hold shift and pull up to pull it all up in there. And I can see based, it's hard to see my other lines, but when it sort of matches the perspective of the house, I'm going to need to go a little bit more. Oops, I'm in scale still. So let me go back to edit and you can keep flipping back and forth, back to perspective. Make this more in perspective. I might even cheat a little bit and pull that up just a little bit like that. I'm going to set this that way. Now, I'm going to temporarily turn off this brick layer. I've got the whole area. What I want to do is I just did this face here and this face here because those are going towards that perspective. So now I need to make sure I just have that area selected. So I'm going to go to my magic wand which is right here. I'm going to click and hold and select magic wand. Again, make sure sample all layers is selected. And I'm going to select here. That gives me one piece. Now I want more than one piece, so I'm going to have to go to additive. So if yours is not selected right here, see where my cursor is? Just make sure you click that just so I can select that face and select this face oh, and get that little shadow there. All right. Now I'm going to go to select inverse just to do the opposite. Now watch when I turn on the brick and I hit delete. What I have left is the perspective on that side. You can see my perspective is a little off. I probably should have spent more time 
making sure it looked right. So that's that's one face. And this is when you're working in Photoshop in perspective, you often have to do each faces separately. Um, I got a little extra down here. Um, that was just a poor selection set on my part, but I can just go and delete that away because the bat, the other color is on a different layer, which makes it easy to delete. Um, and essentially, I need to do the same thing for the right-hand face. So I'm just going to make a new layer and call it Brick 2 to do the other side. And I'm going to sort of select everything again. And I'm going to use that same pattern I made. So I'll go Fill, Pattern. And I'm going to go to this sort of quick stone pattern I made, put it all over that way. And I'm going to do perspective, but I'm going to do it the other way. So transform perspective. And in this case, I need to pull this tight down and sort of trying to make it about the same. If I, if I move it over, that'll work. So I want to make the horizon line about there. So actually, this is slightly better. If I just move it to the right, that's also just like scaling it. Uh, that's a bit easier to make sure it matches in there. And um, probably could adjust a little more by zooming in, but we'll say that's good enough. I'll remove that so I can see. I'll do Control D to deselect. I'm going to go back to my magic wand to select this face. Make sure your add it, additive selected is selected to select all these pieces of that face and this face, turn the brick layer on, select, inverse that selection, and hit delete. And now I've got the bricks going in the other way. So two layers, just a quick method of making sort of a stone-like pattern. You can add other filters to this. If I came maybe and selected both layers and went to filter, actually, I guess let's do one at a time. And what I can do is I can actually select both layers at this point, and then I can merge those layers together so I can work on them uniformly. So I'm going to go to Layer. I'm going to merge layers, just those two now become one. That's going to allow me to do things like going to Filter Gallery um, and just trying some things to give it a little more texture to them. So maybe Film Grain could be interesting to add some more texture to it. This is a big file here now, so it's taking a bit time to think. There we go. See, it's added some grain. I could I could just try regular grain as well. Uh, see how that looks. I could add, I could try texturizing it just to add texture. Whatever you want to do, you can just play with it, see what you can get. I'll go with texturizing. See how that looks. It's just a little bit of relief. That's probably too much. Too much relief. I'll say OK. And um, see what you can do. Again, I don't think this particular setting is the most relevant for this assignment. But you know, you get, get something that feels like brick or stone in there. Um, from zoomed out far away, it's actually not too bad. Um, and we'll go with that. So good luck with that. I'll let that one be, be playing with. You can play with it a little bit, see what you can do going beyond this video.